All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the masterclass all about posture. Posture, posture, posture. It's posture mythbusters masterclass. And I want to talk about the masterclass before I introduce our speakers tonight. We have a whole series of masterclasses that are just incredible. And if you want to learn more, go to d57tm.org and come out to member resources and then masterclass in communication leadership. Click that button and then you come down here and you can read about the masterclass. If you want to submit your own, Albert just signed up, masterclass at d57tm.org will get you on the schedule. And tonight we have Mythbusters and then June 29th, please don't miss it, minimize anxiety and maximize performance with John Neville. We also have all of these recorded so you can come and watch them. Eleanor did a great one just recently. Craig's was awesome. William Hung. Go and see all these incredible things. So that is what I, that's my plug for tonight. And there's going to be a survey at the end of this. So please take that survey. Now let me go ahead and introduce our presenters tonight. Have you ever heard a nagging voice in the back of your mind telling you to have better posture? Uh -oh. Do you ever feel lost in a sea of information and gadgets that claim to cure your back pain? Ugh. Evelyn and Steve are certified and professional Alexander Technique teachers. They're here to dispel the posture myths that pervade our society. By the end of this workshop, you will know what good posture actually is and how to start finding it for yourself. I'm going to turn it over to Steve Bolhoffer now to kick us off. Can everyone else just turn off their videos, please? Thank you. This is it. I'm finally going to have good posture. I'm about to head to a solo jazz swing dance competition in Orlando, Florida, and I'm leaving from Tampa. I've got an hour and a half drive to finally have good posture so that when I get to that dance event, I can win. Now, I know there's something that people have, when I see my favorite dancers, my favorite musicians, there's some way of moving, some thing about their posture that's special, that helps them win, that, that we all love to watch. And I kind of know what good posture is. Uh, I got my, my head up, my chest out, my back straight. I think it's straight. And I'm going to hold this and practice this good posture for the next hour and a half. So I get into my car, grab the steering wheel, I'm driving. Half an hour goes by. I'm doing good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it this time. I've tried to have good posture before, but I failed. But this time, I'm actually going to do it. So an hour goes by. Oh, now my back is really starting to ache. But I'm not going to give up. I'm strong. I can hold this good posture. An hour and a half goes by. I pull into the dance studio parking lot. And as I turn off the ignition of my car, the ignition for my posture also turns off. I collapse onto the steering wheel. I can't hold it anymore. If this is what good posture is, maybe I'm just not cut out to have good posture. Maybe it's just not for me. I get out and I go into the swing dance competition and I do my best solo jazz in Charleston. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what? I win that competition. I actually get first place in this local solo jazz dance competition. But I didn't even have what I thought was good posture. In fact, if anything, I was so exhausted by holding my good posture for the hour and a half that when I actually got on stage and danced, I relaxed, didn't worry about it, and fell back into my natural way of holding myself. Obviously, there's something that I didn't understand about good posture. And actually, I had stepped right into posture myth number one. Good posture is hard. Myth busted. Evelyn, can you tell us more about why good posture doesn't have to be hard? Yes, I'd be glad to. Thank you, Steve. Before I talk about what I'm going to tell you about posture, I would like anybody who has an idea about what good posture is to them, 
what they do for good posture, to please type that into the chat and uh, I will see what comes up. The chances are there are some similar things that we all think of when we think of good posture. As I wait for your responses, which I'm sure will come up, I'm gonna tell you to think of a pole, a long pole, like a flagpole, but it's bendable. When, uh, but now I'm gonna tie a rope on top of the pole and I'm gonna pull it down. And I see, oh, that's not right. The, the, pole's, the pole's bent over. So what am I gonna do? Well, what if I tie another rope and pull it back the other way? So now with both ropes pull, pull, pulling on the pole on opposite sides, the pole is basically upright. That is what we do with our posture. Instead of uh, anything else is a pull back, right? So what we have, believe it or not, what we do is we pull down with the front of us, our front muscles and we have a curve, like a C-shape. Steve is helping, if you can see Steve, he's, he's helping us show a slump. We all know that's bad. We've heard it from our parents to, sit, to, to be uh, upright. And so what Steve will do is show us what we do. We pull our shoulders back, right? I see one of the comments is wear t-shirts backwards. <laughs> that's funny. And that's because the neck will hit you. So it will tell you you're coming down. And our reaction, I'm pretty sure, is going to be to come back up. The problem is we haven't gotten rid of this front part, this tension that's all literally pulling us down. To counteract that, we simply pull back like the other pole. So for most people, good posture is holding yourself up. And I would like to say that is a second myth, and that is a myth busted because good posture is simply not using all that tension that we use habitually. We don't even know we're doing it. I'm going to pass it over to Steve, who's going to guide us through some good posture basics. Steve? Thank you, Evelyn. All right, this is the part of the program where everyone gets to participate. So let me get my cameras all set up here. So right now, you can see me from this side and I'm gonna be sitting and you can also do this. So this is a group exercise everyone can follow along with. And I'm going to walk you through what to do when next time that nagging voice comes into your head when you're, as I see uh, uh, in the comments, you're in an intense gaming session and you collapse towards the computer. The next time you notice that you want to change something about your posture, I'm gonna give you a tool to use. Now, the first part of this is actually posture myth number three. Your chair is designed to help you have good posture. Myth busted. Actually, a lot of the parts of your chair don't help you have good uh, posture, don't actually help your body have a nice aligned and balanced state. So first thing I'm gonna suggest you do is Sit more on the front of your chair, or if you're standing, notice uh, you shouldn't have more than half your weight on your heels if you're standing. And if you're sitting, you should be more on the front of your chair so that you don't have your hamstrings on the chair. And then you can feel your sit bones. These are the bones in the bottom of your pelvis. So if you have a hard chair, you can really feel those. And even if you have a soft chair, you can probably sense them. And have your feet flat on the ground. Really notice the connection between your ground and the, your feet, the ground and your feet. And this is the place to start from because if you're slouched back, lying in a chair, or lying on a couch with your legs crossed, it's, you can uh, breathe and, and feel your body as much as you want, but it's still gonna be really hard for the natural writing mechanisms of your body to come into play. So start in a place where your body is more upright. Now what you want to begin doing is sensing your body. What happens is that when you're focused on tasks, when you're focused on your work, when you're focused on the screen, everything else that your senses are giving you gets turned off. 
your brain can only process so much of the huge amount of information it's receiving from your body all the time. And when you're concentrated, when you're focused, your body is what gets sacrificed most of the time, unfortunately. If only we were just brains and vats that were able to be on our computers all the time. But unfortunately, some of us may be unhappy about this, our bodies are what bring our minds, carry us around and, and help us interact and get all our wonderful ideas out in the world. So you're sitting in this more upright position, you're feeling your feet on the ground. Now start to notice your breathing. Don't change anything, just notice that you are naturally breathing, that you're, I hope you're breathing at least, that your chest and your back, your whole ribs, in fact, are moving with each breath. What you're doing is you're taking a break from the focus on the next task or on your computer or whatever you're doing. And you're giving a chance for the information that is coming into your brain from your body to sense what's going on in your body rather than being focused on what you're doing. And this will happen naturally because as soon as you take away the stimulus of focusing on your work, you'll start to notice what's going on in your body. And in fact, this is when you can start to find truly good posture because good posture, as we've discussed, it doesn't have to be hard. It's not holding yourself up. It's actually listening to your body, finding a natural balance, pl uh, balance place. As Evelyn was describing with this flagpole that's being pulled down and then you fix it by pulling yourself up. You actually want to cut both those ropes and have the flagpole be balanced, standing erect. And this is what you wanna look for in your body. Now, as I've been talking, as you've been noticing your breath, noticing your feet on the ground, opening up your mind to take in what your body is telling it. Did you notice a uh, tension somewhere? Did you notice, oh wow, I've got this sore spot in my neck, or oh wow, I feel like my back is hurting or I'm arching my back. It's actually really great to put, for example, put the back of your hand on your back and actually feel your muscles back there and see if you feel like you're tightening something. And you can also touch different parts of your body to see if they feel tense because good posture is letting go of this excess tension that comes in when you're focused, when you're doing something, when you're trying to accomplish something and coming to a balanced, easy place in your body. Then when you're there, you can go back to your task and try to save just a tiny bit of room to still continue feeling those sensations from your body. Now, did you notice as you were doing this that maybe one of those tensions let go, that you were breathing, and suddenly you realized you didn't have to hold your shoulders up or hold your legs or arch your back? What will happen as you notice your body? You will let go of the excess tension because no one wants to be walking around with all this tension in their body. It feels painful and it's not fun. So when you actually listen to your body, you'll start to naturally let go of some of those tensions. And as you do that, you'll find what good posture actually is for you. So remember, next time you're sitting in front of your computer all day and you have that voice come in saying, have better posture, have better posture, stop, stop slumping. Don't react immediately. Pause, sense what's actually going on in your body. Bring yourself to a slightly more upright position on the front of your chair with your feet flat on the ground and just spend 20 to 30 seconds or however long you feel like opening up to sense what's actually going on in your body so you can let go of those excess tensions that are causing you pain and find a balanced natural posture for you. Now we're going to move on and let one of you actually practice this for us on screen. We have a couple volunteers and Evelyn is going to lead in walking one of our volunteers. I think our first volunteer 
is Joyce. She was on first. And Bet, could you keep track of timing so we don't spend too long on any one person? And over to you, Evelyn and Joyce. Thank you, Steve. Hi, Joyce. Are you unmuted? Yes, I am. Hi, Evelyn. Excellent. All right. Um, what I would like to do is first just ask you how you feel as you're sitting there. A little tired. <laughs> tired? Okay. That's a good start. It's the end of the day. And um, where, where do you feel that you're working to sit? You're sitting pretty much upright, it looks like. Or do you feel like you're working to do it? A little bit, yes. And where, where would that be? The lower back. Lower back, ah, the lower back. 90% of people can probably identify with that. All right, the first thing I want you to do is if your lower back is, is tight, uh, just remember you are the one tightening it. It sounds kind of silly, but you wanna know that that's work that you're doing. That's causing your back to get a little tight or tired. You uh, are sitting up, that's nice. Do you feel your sit bones? I do, yes. Yeah. Good. So I want you to think of your sit bones as the feet of your torso. Most of the weight of your torso is going, should be going into your sit bones. For a lot of people that ends up going more towards their tailbone and they have to push their uh, pelvis forward in order not to roll back. I want to show you, this is a really good thing. It's a wedge that is easy to put underneath of you and it tips you your pelvis a little bit so it doesn't roll back. Another thing you can do is just take a uh, roll and stick it behind you so yet you're sitting kind of in the front of it. And I just did that and it just tips my uh, hips a little bit forward so I don't roll back and my back doesn't have to work very hard. So those are, those are two things you can do. I'm not gonna ask you to do them now because you'll take some time. But what I do want you to do is put your hands just on your, on your um, legs, on your thighs. And as you're, as you're sitting there, I want you to think, I'm gonna give you a couple silly thoughts and everybody who's listening, you can think along with Joyce. You may not be doing the exact same thing, but this applies to everybody. I want you to think of your head as a balloon that's just floating up. You're not pushing it up. It's just nice and floaty and light. And your neck, which we usually think of as the main job is to hold the head in place. I want you to think of it instead as balancing your head. So it has a lot less work to do than you probably think it needs to do. So a nice thought for our head, besides it being light like a balloon, is that it can, it can move very, a very tiny amount in any direction. It's light and almost like a balloon in, in a breeze. It's, it will tip and turn and, and whatnot. And you don't have to move it even very much. In fact, my head and my body has been moving this whole time like a tightrope walker. Even when we're still, we actually want to have movement because we want to balance instead of hold. So your, your head is way up high. It's just like this micro bobbling or a bobble that is uh, available to you at any time. And then on the other side are your sit bones taking in your weight. You can think of your torso like the Eiffel Tower. You've got these sit bones that are, that are with the pelvis nice and, and sturdy and it goes up into a very small little neck and then uh, just a little um, a head on top that's very light because it's just balancing there. Now I want you to just think of your hip joints right now. I often think of them as well lubricated. And why I like to think of that is I want to know that if I'm going to tip forward and reach for something, I use very little effort to come forward. So I want you to come forward all the way from your, your hip joints, yeah. I want you to point at your hip joints. They're way down there, way down, yes. So I want you to come forward. Yeah, okay, now what, what I see you doing a little bit is, is a little bit of a C shape going in. Really think of that, that bottom way down, those hips, that's where you're moving. So your whole back, yes, goes forward, and then your entire back comes back, very easy, yeah. Now that kind of movement, and, and you're on your sit bones the whole time, that kind of movement, I want that to be available to you all the time. So what that means is, there's no fly in here, but if there's a fly and I go to swat it, 
my, my body moves a little bit because I'm not holding, I'm balancing. It's like those toys, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. There's, there's, there's a little movement. And in fact, it's a very tiny amount. You're moving a lot and that's fine, just kind of feeling it out. But believe it or not, you can have a little teeny movement all the time and nobody knows about it. What I do is whenever I stand in line at Trader Joe's, that is my sign to stand there. And instead of my hips, I think of over my ankles. There's a little teeny bit of movement all the time and nobody can tell. They'd be looking at me and they still couldn't tell. And that's what I want you to do is just have that little bit of movement. And then you're actually stacked up on top of those sit bones. There's the sit bones to the shoulders, to the head. You don't have to worry about your alignment. You just want to know that your head is light and your neck doesn't have to do much at all. What I like to, th one of my favorite thoughts is my neck is doing too much. I just assume that. And that opens a door for me to do less with my neck. These sound like silly um, ideas, but they're, they're very effective. So you've got the, the sit bones on one end with all your weight going it through there and your head on the other end, which is nice and airy and light and delicately balanced by your neck. Does that sound okay? Yeah, in fact, it released my shoulders. I noticed they were scrunched up earlier. Yes, excellent. There's a wonderful mission creep with this. Once you start re releasing excess tension somewhere, the next place will also go along with it. It realizes it doesn't need the tension. Very good, very Great. good. And, that, and my time is up on you. You did beautifully. So just know that you've got that movement available to you all the time little micro movements. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you very much. All right. Do we have another volunteer? Let's uh, answer some questions uh, first. Oh, yeah. 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 So Beth, I believe people can raise their hands if they have a question. Is that how it works? I mean, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's, an, it's a small group. You can just take questions if people want to ask a question. I wouldn't mind. Um, Oh, how to remember to maintain good posture. Did you want to take that, Steve, or do you, I've been talking. I don't want to hog. Yeah, so good reminders. Uh, how, remember, how do you remember to maintain good posture? Is that your question? Um, how can you remember? Uh, if that is a question, it, it's, uh, it takes some practice. I feel like most people here, and you can correct me if this isn't true, have some inkling. Uh, every once in a while that uh, they notice something in their bodies. Oftentimes it's a pain. For me, I'll notice a, a slight, slight pain somewhere or maybe at the end of the day, I'll feel a tenseness in my neck if I was really crouched over at my computer all day. So I think listen, when you get those small sensory inputs from your body, that is the spark that reminds you to have, to, tr to remember to work on your posture. And as you start to think about that more often and notice it uh, every once in a while, it'll start to work its way into your brain and you'll start noticing it more and more often and you'll start to become more and more aware of your body and then you'll begin to notice more and more if you are excessively pulling yourself down or tensing something. I'd like to add to that if I can. Uh, yeah, what Steve is talking about is so important. It's, it's awareness. And once you are aware, you start to become more and more aware. So it builds on it. One thing that I uh, recommend to people is to uh, find something that they do that they know they don't do very well and use that as their reminder. For some people, it's brushing teeth because they often come down to the toothbrush a little bit. You can think of bringing the toothbrush all the way up to you, yourself. And you can say, well, my posture isn't the greatest, but when I brush my teeth, I'm nice and light and easy. And believe it or not, that helps you remember it in other times. But this is a skill. It's uh, not something that you learn one day and then, and then you've got it. You get better and better, um, but, but that is one way. Evelyn, do you have any comments on, uh, he just posted uh, braces or electric reminders? Oh yeah, yeah, there's a lot of those. Now those are, uh, that's uh, myth buster number two which is holding ourselves up. That's what, if you notice somebody slouching and then they uh, get a little uh, reminder from the electronic thing to uh, hold themselves up, 
or they wear some kind of harness that pulls their shoulders back. What you want actually is to let your shoulders ease out because if you're pulling them back, one, you're tiring your back and those muscles that have to do it. And two, as I mentioned earlier, you're not addressing the tension that's causing your shoulders to come forward and down. And if you, uh, I don't know if you heard, but Joyce said that she noticed her shoulders were, were up and she let them go. And that's what we want. It's not relaxing, it's releasing tension. Yeah, and Michelle asks, how do you, you correct shoulders that roll forward? And I think that touches on what Evelyn was just talking about. And I'll add one more thing on that. For me, shoulders rolling forward often means uh, collapsing in the front and what we think of as a slump. And what really helps me work on that is instead of noticing that and thinking I have to fix it and immediately pulling myself up like this, which just makes it more tense, as we were talking about earlier, what I actually do is I think about my breath, especially in the front. And without physically changing anything about myself, I'll think about my whole front moving and expanding as I breathe in and of letting go of the tension in the front. Because remember, if your shoulders are slumping forward, it's actually a tension in your front pulling you down. So if you think of letting go of that tension, of easing this and allowing your breath to fill up your rib cage, that's what helps me a lot with uh, working on that slump. Yes, and remember Joyce, I, I told Joyce that she was tightening her back. So if your shoulders are coming forward, you are bringing them forward. <laughs> Just know, so what you need to do is to, it sounds simple, but is to not do that anymore. To have that awareness that you are doing it and then to learn how to release that tension that's pulling it, pulling them in and down. There's also a great question about knots in the neck. We often put our head out in front of us or somewhere else that's not just above our, our bodies, our shoulders. And because of that, the neck has to work really hard. So if you, uh, one thing I think is a really obvious example is if you go bowling, even a little child knows to hold that ball right over the arm. Otherwise it's so much work. But that's what we do with our neck. We send our heads out usually or somewhere else and then our neck has to do all the work holding that 8 to 11 pounds that's out there uh, from falling forward. So a lot of it is not collapsing and looking down or pulling our heads down uh, but using our neck, our spine ends up here at the top of our neck way up here and that little head bobble, not, not necessarily bobbling, but that there's movement way up here will help. That helps so that your head is up floating and uh, not actually floating, but being, being delicately balanced by the neck. So you do much less work with your neck. All right, we're getting a lot of other questions. Before we move on to more questions, let's move on to our next volunteer, Smitha and then we will come back and answer some more questions. Smitza, can you unmute yourself? Yes, could you hear me now? Yes. Okay. All right. Am I audible? Do I have to use a headphone? You're audible, I can hear you. Okay. okay. And uh, can we make Smitza's view the spotlight, okay. The spotlight bet, so I can see her in the big picture, thank you. Very nice. And now she's gone. It's me again in the spotlight. Oh, uh, I did not accept it. Could you send that again? And All Steve, right, I'll time you, okay? Okay, thank you, Ben. All right. Vincent, okay. so how are you feeling uh, in your posture right now? Are you sitting? To be honest, I already feel... There's a cool. What do I do? I'm sorry. You sound great, Smitha. Just keep talking. Okay. Uh, we can't hear you now. We can't hear you. Now okay. we can. Good. Perfect. Okay, go ahead. So the tension builds over here on my over my neck and my mid 
shoulder and there's a bunch of tight muscles. So first thing I'd ask you to do is to tear back from your desk a little bit. Um, yeah. Your chair, can you do that? Could you repeat that, please? Can you, oh, yeah. So first thing, could you scoot your chair back a little bit and come look more to the, yes, to the front, even more so to the front of you. Okay. Yeah. And now notice your feet on the ground. And actually, you can even have a bit of a, a thread to your knees so that they're not holding in front of you. Yeah, so your knees are easy and they're pointing out over your feet. Yeah, and now take your hand and put it on your back, the back of your hand. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, uh, lower back. Okay, yeah. my yeah, and back is fine. Back. And you can feel, yeah, you can feel the lumbar muscles along the side the size of the spine there. And you can feel your lower, you can feel uh, the bottom of your spine next to your pelvis. And now put your hands back up a little bit and think about breathing in your back. So you're letting your back release and you're actually letting that, uh, your tailbone, your stake release it so that your back becomes a bit flat. Yeah, and oh. then notice your head and neck and let your chin drop a tiny bit. Yeah, and now you can move your hands. You can put your hands on your back. Yeah. yeah. What do you notice? When I put my hands at the lower back, I have a lot of pain here. Hmm. Where the tension is usually, it's sore over here mm. yeah so that oftentimes is connected uh to the lower back i think as well as the head so you've got the two ends of the spine um yeah let your let your chin drop slightly so what you want to think about is having your head be movable your neck be movable yeah and that really that's good. Yeah. Notice if it, if it sticks anymore anywhere. Yeah. So you can move it around a little bit and then stop moving it and see if you can still let it be easy. Mm -hmm. And keep on noticing your breath. Yeah, wait for that par big parasympathetic breath that helps reset things. And think about Yes, being easy, letting go of tension, letting your lower back uh, be easy. Actually, the other way. So instead of pulling it up, yes, let it go a little bit. And then as you let it go a little bit, let your head down. So I can actually, I can, you can see it too. And your back is actually greater. And I think I know what your tendency to do when you think about it is to actually push in, and which is actually arching. And that's really tied to a lot of tension in the shoulders, is arching in the back, the lower back. So. Right. I reduced the height of the chair while you were speaking because I don't have the habit of keeping my feet on the ground. I always keep it on top of the chair or just, I do this with knees. Here. Oops. You do what with your feet, sorry? I put my feet like this. Oh, yes. Yeah. So that that can definitely affect it because it can put a lot of pressure on your back when you have your uh, legs up. I mean, that's, that happens to all of us. When you're focused, the tension tends to go somewhere, and oftentimes it's somewhere in the legs. So I think even just for you uh, to come out with this is just about letting your legs be more easy when you're working, I think that might make a difference. Um, Can yeah. I chime in? Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, 
One thing that I like to tell people is to think of themselves as Goldilocks or the princess and the pea. And by that, I mean, you want to be really picky about your work environment, that it needs to work for you. So what you have right here is a, uh, is a, um, hey, Evelyn, can you sorry. You yeah, sorry. I just started it. Uh, what you have is a pretty low chair compared to your workstation. Mm -hmm. So that's going to cause you to need to reach up and try to get to your work. Okay. And what you want is uh, more like a, a, like a pianist. You know, everything lower. Yeah. Okay. So, and Steve had mentioned going up closer to the edge of the chair, which might help because then you're, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a bit more neutral. I still would say that your um, workspace is a little high for you. Really? Yeah. Press forward and up with your back. Try to uh, do that. You might you might want to look at a different workstation, just or place, if if possible. That is much better. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that was a great point, Evelyn. Yeah, the workstation is high, and then you're holding your arms up as you're working on the computer. Yeah. Yeah, to be honest, this is better. Yeah, and this really helped too, being able to have a camera from the side and look in the front and see yourself. It's kind of like having a mirror. So you can actually see what your body is doing while you're working on your computer. And it can give you a lot of interesting insights <laughs> because a lot of us are doing stuff that we are totally unaware of with our bodies. Right. My husband has the same problem with upper shoulders right here. Yeah. Um, so the last thing I will say, recommend, and this also goes to uh, what Alzar was talking about having, of having knots up there, is uh, when you're having that pain, go and lie on a hard, relatively hard, flat surface on the ground and put something on your head like a thin book and lie down, have your knees up and your feet flat on the ground and uh, just lie for a few minutes, five minutes, five minutes and allow your back to reset because it can be hard while you're in the chair, while you're on the computer to let go of a lot of this tension. But when you're lying down on the ground, you're easy, you don't have to worry about anything. It can let your back open, reset, and you can breathe. And that can be a really helpful thing to use when you're in a lot of pain. I'd like to make a comment that uh, addresses a, a few of the different comments and uh, what, what Smitha was just saying, which is if your neck is, or the top shoulder is, is um, hurting, it's a really good chance that you're throwing your head forward and uh, having your whole torso come forward instead, if you're going to reach for something, instead of just your uh, upper shoulders and head and then coming back will uh, really help make a difference. We get out of, I don't want to call it alignment, but out of a neutral space for our spine and we throw our head forward, remember that's that bowling ball, and then your poor wrist, which in this case is your neck, is trying to hold on to that. And if you are thinking of your neck balancing your head, then um, you probably don't have to wear t-shirts backwards. <laughs> when you're playing a video game, you don't have to get as involved by, by um, uh, making a C-shape with your torso and having your head out you can have your head above your hip joints, hip bones. I'm sorry, it's bones. Okay. I have a bit more line. Question. At least more than half of the day, I don't have to type, I'm mostly listening. So what is the best posture? I feel more comfortable when I'm sitting like this. You know, I'm having back posture then again. What's the best posture for not typing? Uh, well, what I would say is, uh, if I had your workstation, I probably would also want to do that because it's it's pretty high. Um, if you notice, your your chair then leans back, 
right at your uh, kind of middle. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's kind of hard on your low back and, and, and on your mid back. And then you're going to need to pull your head forward if you need to address anything in front of you. So if you have a chair that even just for a few minutes at a time to get used to is a little harder, that would be good. And if you can get that, that keyboard, the work, the, the, the counter or the keyboard lower, that will help you because uh, you're like a little kid in a way that your, your work is so high up. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there's a question here. Chairs that are all, always too high. Yes. So on to more questions. Let's say thank you, Smitha, for volunteering. Mm -hmm. That was thank great. You. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you found that helpful. Sure. And now yeah, you can turn off your video and we will move on to answering some more questions from the audience. Go ahead, Evelyn. Yes. Chair, chairs are not our friend. That's Mythbuster 3. Chairs. Yeah. Number three, chairs are not your friends. <laughs> One problem, I'm just going to read this because it's a, a bit of text. One problem I have is that chairs are almost always too high for me. I'm short and I get cramps in my calves from most people's chairs. At work, I have one that is adjustable. But what do you recommend when chairs don't fit people properly? Say, for example, at a restaurant, <laughs> when that used to be a thing. Yeah. Um, let's see, I'm on the tall side, so I haven't experienced this, but I do have a lot of... Um, I will not hesitate to use a cushion like this or a roll, something behind me to get myself forward. Of course, if you're at a restaurant, you're having to deal with what they've given you. Uh, what I would do is like what, uh, basically what Steve is doing there. If you see, he's, he's got his sit bones on the chair, obviously, and then his legs are free to fall away so that his knees are a bit lower than his hips. And if you're a short person, um, and the, the chair's a little high, it can be a little bit like a stool where you're, you're upright and your knees go down and then your feet are still going to be able to be flat on the, on the floor. Um, I don't know if that helps. Can we call not. them vertically, I would do. vertically challenged? Vertically Vertic challenged. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, maybe I can add on to that real quick, Evelyn, also. I Wait. think if, if you move to the front of the chair, almost no chair is too high for you because eventually, you're just standing and having the chair right next to you. So if you have a chair that's really too high for you and you're sitting and you're trying to use that whole chair and, and lean back and use the backrest, then you're gonna have trouble with your feet. So if you find a chair that's really uncomfortable and too high for you, I would say move forward to the front of the chair and then your feet and legs can, can fall away and you won't have that problem. And one thing I think most people might be thinking is, well, what if I, you know, I, I like to lean back in the chair and, and have a support. And I understand that you can, as I said, put pillows behind you at home. But at a restaurant, what I would do is make sure you feel those sit bones and that you remind yourself that you're balancing here, that you don't have to hold yourself up. That is not posture. That's just a lot of work. Um, so uh, keep that in mind, that, that if you're balancing, you're doing a lot less work, and uh, anybody can sit on the front of the chair, as, as Steve said. No chair is too high. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, I see a question from Joanne. I get tension in my mid-back. How could I correct that? <laughs> well, that's a question and there are various reasons for that without looking at you we can um, give you a bunch of guesses if you want to be somebody who gets evaluated right now we can take a look at you uh, usually people are holding themselves up when they when their mid back is hurting uh, occasionally it's because they're so collapsed but usually it's because they're trying to do uh, hold themselves up so if um, our, what we've said so far hasn't really spoken to that part, the, the, the mid, mid torso. There are a lot of uh, muscles throughout our torso that help us. And again, you can think of them as I like to think of my neck, that my torso is probably doing too much. Um, two things, you can uh, think of your head being nice and light, and then those sit bones underneath at the bottom that you're really supported by them. 
I've used a wedge before that helps. Um, I really like a hard chair so I can feel my sit bones. And then just make sure you can do just a little teeny bit of movement without any effort. What you wanna do is start stripping away some of the tension that you're holding, that you're using to hold yourself up that you don't need. Uh, so I see a question. We have a new volunteer. Also, team, we have a volunteer. Alzara Getz would like to get her posture evaluated. Oh, great. So I don't know if you want to go to the question first or to Alzara. Well, we'll go to, to Alzara. Uh, Evelyn, do you want to start off? Sure. Yeah. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can yes. hear you. So I'm on a couch, but I could um, turn it down or I could. All right. At a desk. All um, right. And so this is, yes, the, you have the one that chairs are almost always too small for you. Okay. Right. So do you do work at your, at your, at your sofa? Yes, because I'm working from home twice a week now. All right. And yeah, sometimes I'm at the office, and so when I'm on this couch, I'm usually like sitting like this, and then I have kind of like a little portable table that I put in front of me, and I like all type. Right. And, and then what happens over time? I'm... Um. Well, I start doing this, and I start, you know, <laughs> trying to get comfy different ways. I right. I think I lean forward, so I think that you know, I my vision is a little bit challenged, so I think I start trying to see this crazy software. Mm -hmm. and probably you know doing this more and then i'm getting tension in my my shoulders and some of those similar areas kind of like that t-shape okay down, you know okay good so the first the first thing to remember as as steve said is that chairs and sofas they're not really your friend they're a no. place for you to sit down and you're kind of on your own what i do whenever i go to a sofa if i'm going to be there is I try to get enough pillows behind me that I do have some sort of support, even if it means four pillows, even if it's ridiculous. Remember, Princess and the Pea, how many mattresses did she have and she could still feel the pea? That's what you want. You want to say, I am the most important thing in this room, far more important, even if I'm working on a Nobel Prize, I am the most important thing. So what I'm going to do before I look at my work do anything with my computer is make sure that I'm sitting comfortably. Now that's so that sofa seems pretty low. Can do you need to be at the edge or can you be back a little bit more? This one's yeah. This is pretty low. That's why I like it. I think okay, I good. So much on it, but I do think I it sinks a little bit underneath me so that my legs are also up like this. Right. Like yeah. Like that. Okay. Up? So so we're just going to say to acknowledge that this isn't ideal but this is where you want to sit and that's fine so we're going to make it work the second thing i do is i make sure my hips are way in that corner where the sofa meets the the pillow so i'm really there and that way i have that support and then i ask myself do i feel as if i'm on a throne here where i am being supported and people come to me with their petitions and i don't have to do anything my work comes to me or am i trying to reach out and do something. No, I'm sitting up here all regally on my sofa in front of my work, yeah. And does that feel like you could sit there for 30 minutes and be pretty comfortable? Or does it feel like you're, um, won't be comfortable? That's what you wanna ask yourself. How do you, you know feel? what I think the problem is, is what you guys just explained that you're supposed to be more like balanced. And I think that you know, the, the pelvic is lower than my knees. Right, so, that, that yeah. can be a problem. Right. I'm just, I'm going to, I'm going ahead. Yeah, you could do that. You could do that. The um, other thing, it's really important not to let those hips roll back. So that's what a, so that's, that's the, one of the important things about a, a bunch of pillows or cushions behind your back is to ensure that your hips don't roll back. Cause if they roll back, you're done. There's no, your back is going to hurt. So you really want to think about those, even if you can't, as Steve said, you might not be able to feel your sit bones, but you kind of know where they're pointing and right. they need to be pointing down. That's 
definitely more slopey. So if I kind of have to make a chair like within the couch. Instead right, of right. So, <laughs> and I would say even if your hips are a little bit lower, as long as they're not rolled back, you're in much better shape. That's the, that's, and my only question is, is that comfortable? That doesn't look like, you, would you be there for 20, 30 minutes okay? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's not super comfy, like the, the base isn't super solid. Right, right. Go yeah. ahead and take out that, that pillow that you're sitting on. Okay. Also, Alzara is sitting on the crack. Maybe if you're sitting on the. Uh, oh yeah. I didn't oh oh, never mind. There is. It's a single cushion. Sorry. Okay. Oh, oh no, there is. It is. There is a crack. You're right. You're right. Yes. And um, I try to. I I often position myself in the middle so that it's not. You, you know, there's little things that become big things over time. So you want to um, make sure those. I would put those pillows back up against that sofa and really make sure. You're being supported and the green one can even be raised just a little bit to get your butt all the way back there up against that other pillow if you need to yeah yeah so what you want and what i'm doing now with the pillow is i feel like i'm completely uh supported here how do you feel right there so my back feels really good my shoulders feel good the only thing is my knee i feel a little tension in my knee that may have been there to begin with so there's tension in your knees right now as you sit? Yeah. Interesting. Um, can you have your knees, let your knees ease out from each other or be a little bit slightly wider? Yeah, you could do a little man spreading. <laughs> That's so not That's my style. Guys. Okay. I'm trying. Uh, and how does that, how does that feel? That helps, yeah. That helps. It's, it's not an ideal situation. That's pretty good for what you're, what you're sitting on, uh, considering the pillows and the surface. So. Um, yeah, the knee tension went away when I kind of just. Good. A little bit. Um, yeah, one thing you can do, it sounds silly, but you can, you, can, you can put a hand on each knee and just kind of jiggle them back and forth and make sure you're not holding with your legs. So that from your from your hip to your knee, if it, your knees can kind of flop in and out, but your hands are doing the work, not your knees. Your hands. You just want to make sure your legs aren't holding. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. I Unless think move on to another question. Okay. Thank, okay. You. Thank you, so much, Alzara, for being on screen and volunteering. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. There's a question about the two nineties. What are those? Yeah, I haven't heard of the 290s either. I was going to ask Albert if he could turn on his video and explain to us very briefly, because we don't have much time left, but very briefly explain what you mean by the 290s. Okay, can you, uh, can you hear me? Yes. So uh, I attended a few uh, ergonomics uh, workshops, and we were told something like, you have your elbow here as a 90 and then your knees will be another 90 and then of course your shoe your uh your feet and the ground will be another 90 actually it will be like three 90s uh, so i i have been following those principles and has been working out pretty nicely for the most part so i'm just surprised that you didn't mention those principles you want to take that, Steve, or should I? Uh, go ahead. The uh, idea behind a lot of things that go with posture, ergonomics included, is uh, positioning. So the 90 degrees is great, but we're not going to tell you to be a certain angle because that's going to bring that holding in. And what we want is a quality, which is released excess tension, enough tension so that you're upright, but, and, and doing what you need to do, but no more. And sometimes you're going to be at a, at a 90 degrees, but sometimes you're gonna be in a higher chair like a stool and that isn't 90 degrees. And that's fine too. The important thing is uh, releasing tension. I would say that the ergonomics requirement or recommendations the 90 degrees, that's nice. That's a nice neutral place to start. Um, you don't wanna be crouched too, too low or too high, um, but, I wouldn't make it a rule. Thank you. 
Sure. Yeah, and a question from Michelle uh, about sitting on a medicine ball. The, I, the whole uh, goal is to be in balance and have your balance uh, engaged while you're working and not be slumping over. And I think it's, it can be hard to slump on a medicine ball, but I think it also is possible to slump. Uh, but if you find it helpful, I think you should do whatever you find helpful. And it oftentimes can be really helpful to have different things to sit on because no one's meant to sit in the same position for eight hours a day. No matter how good your posture is, if you're sitting for eight hours a day, you're gonna, in the exact same position, you're gonna have issues. Yeah, we're not meant for sitting on and on. What we want to help you with is, is sitting as, as well as you can for your, for your body. All right, I think we have to wrap up now. As, uh, does anybody have any final questions? One final question before we wrap up. Oh, online resources. Yes, uh, there there are some. Um, let me let me think about that. Uh, there is a um, Steve and I are Alexander Technique teachers. You can look that up and look at the uh, national organization. Uh, you can also contact us. We can give you a lot of good information, uh, either books, articles, or online resources. Um, so uh, don't hesitate to, to contact us. So what I want to say is that um, uh, bad posture is really common. I think everybody knows that. And also our idea of good posture, which is just as problematic as bad posture, is also a problem. Steve and I are passionate about posture and we help everybody who comes and sees us, whether they have breathing issues, voice issues, performance, they're in pain, they, they want to just feel better in general, they all improve their posture because it's such a foundational part of good health. We're, uh, as I said, we're Alexander Technique teachers we offer virtual lessons, and if any one of you ha have questions or are interested in taking lessons, please give us a call or email us, and we would love to talk to you about posture in general, your posture, et cetera. Yeah, even better, we do in-person sessions <laughs> when we are not all in lockdown, but yeah. hopefully of locked out eventually and get back to uh, being able to do a person, which is a whole lot easier than doing virtual. <laughs> we prefer the, the in-person, but you get a lot out of the virtual, surprise. You sure? And Steve has pretty much pioneered this side view angle, which is just really amazing. And he's on me to help me. So I'm very impressed with it. I just want to say one final thing. Please take a screenshot or a picture of the information here on the screen. And thank you so much, Evelyn, Steve. I learned a lot. I hope everyone really liked it. Thank uh, you. We can stay for a few minutes extra, but I'm going to go ahead and end it. But I just want to do a final plug. Please sign up for John Neville's masterclass. It's coming up on the 29th. And please sign up for more. Albert's is going to come up soon. If you have an awesome topic, please send it to us at masterclass at D57 TM. We're going to send a survey out. Make sure you respond to that. Thank you, everyone, so much. Thank you, Evelyn, Steve. Wonderful Thank job. Thank you, volunteers, as well. Appreciate Thank it. You volunteers. Thank you. Great Welcome. job. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop the video. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.